campaign itself. Yeah, well, fantastic campaign. It had been going on for three years, as I said earlier. The last three or four months, I knew I was winning. Uh, it was, you know, it was over and done with. Uh, and Gwynmore had really made some real howlers. You know, the investiture of the Prince of Wales. And I'm quite happy to think that that was a masterstroke by George Thomas and Harold Wilson and those to do the investiture before the election. Masterstroke. They knew how Ply Cymru would react and they knew it would put Gwynemar in a hall. And he jumped right into it because he refused to go to the investiture. In fact, he, he initiated a debate in Parliament on that day. Now, the investiture was hugely popular, massively popular, right? He realised his mistake. So what did he do? When the Prince was doing his round of Wales, he turned up to meet him in Carmarthen. Didn't go to the investiture, but he turned up. And people made him a laughingstock because he had realised he had made a major mistake. That was the first one. And then there was the fiasco of going to Vietnam. The Vietnam War was on. And this was the member for Wales, you see. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't happy being known as the member for Carmarthen. That would have been good enough for any other ordinary person, but not for Gwynmore Evers. Gwynmore Evers was the member for Wales because Wales didn't have MPs. None of them did the job properly. You know, there was only one member in Wales. And Plank Cambry's people themselves push that line, the member for Wales, the member for Wales. So the member for Wales decided it was time for him to go to Vietnam to express the solidarity of the Welsh people with the Viet Cong and, the, and against America with their bombings and all that sort of thing. The Plank Cambry and the chapel people in his area, because you must remember that uh, the, the big struggle in Carmarthen during the two years before the election were two things. The language people, the Welsh Language Society people, right? And also the ministers of religion. He had about 40, 50 ministers of religion all across the constituency, preaching nationalism and Gwynfor and the language from the pulpits Sunday after Sunday. I was approached once by the Western Mail to say uh, there's been a meeting of 40, 50 um, the, uh, ministers in Carmarthen to uh, put a vote of uh, no confidence in you as a candidate for Carmarthen because of your views on X, Y, Z. And my answer to them was, to the paper was, it's much better if they preached about Jesus Christ in their chapels and forgot about Gwynfor Evans and nationalism. But anyway, whilst he was going to come to uh, Vietnam, supposedly, there were vigils held in certain chapels in Kamadhanja for his safety and his well-being all the time, regular vigils. Mr. Evers never arrived in Vietnam. He never entered the country. He didn't go much further than Cambodia. And he met Prince Chianuk, I think he's, the guy was called then. Well, Another fiasco, the great trip to Vietnam never turned out and there were his people holding vigils in, Viet, in, in, his, in his villages making sure that no harm would come to him in Vietnam. So he walked right into it really and the campaign was such a brilliant campaign, I have to say that. The workers, Woodward had his workers, very good, very good workers, committed people but we could match them this time. I don't only match them, we out them. We had more workers yeah. because we had organized it to a T for three years. It was a well-prepared campaign. And Gwynfor had his posters all over the constituency, on the trees, on the lampposts, and everywhere. And the Western Mail rang me up and said, well, Mr. Jones, it looks as if Gwynfor Evans is winning the election. Yes, I said, so did the trees, so the trees say. Go to the council houses, go to the windows of people's houses, look what the houses are saying. Because I was probably outdoing him by five to one in the, all the mining areas and Camp Nightland and Camp Beer and Brendan and Pont Yates and on and on and on and on. And even in Llangadog, which really surprised me, in his own village, 
I reckon we got more than half the village of Llangadog right. for the 1970 election. There were parts of Llangadog who hated him, and that was because of the way he treated his workers in the market garden. They thought he was a right-wing Tory. The way he paid them, the way he treated them. And those people were living in the council estate. And I had such a welcome there every time I went. It was like being welcomed in the centre of Cymdaithin. Yeah. Really was. But I knew, therefore, it was all over and done with. Um, the election night, which was a huge, a huge, uh, a huge crowd in the town hall in Carmarthen. Uh, God, I remember my mother and uh, stepfather dancing in the street before the result was known. Because it was, I think somebody was creeping, seeping the story out that Gwynver had lost and the crowd was getting more and more excited. Some people were annoyed and shouting and getting it. But it got to a point where he started to get a bit serious there and the police got very concerned. So once the result was known, and it was announced. Now I had to leave the building. Not much has ever been said about this, but it's true. And the police said, look, we are very, very concerned about your safety. You dare not go out of here through the front door because we cannot guarantee your safety. At best, the way out to the front door is for you and your wife to wear police uniform and other people to go out pretending to be you. Mm -hmm. I said, no, 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 that's ridiculous, we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you can't go out for the front door. Mm -hmm. So we went out through some, well, I don't know where it was, they took us through various parts of the Civic Hall mm -hmm. to a back door, and the car was there two feet from the door and took us home. So, you know, anyway, the reception the day afterwards, Unbelievable. Well, not the day afterwards. It was now three o'clock in the morning. And Denzel Davis came over from Clenetley and we had a big celebration in our offices in Carmarthen. And then about five o'clock in the morning, we went home, back to Manoravon. And as we were coming down from Volgasil, well, Geneva Arms was like Piccadilly. Hundreds of cars. The place was wide open. There were no police or anything around, right? Uh, in fact, a little story for you here now. Deneva was a, a, a watering hole for the senior policemen in Carmarthenshire for years. Years. With Melissa and Mansell in Deneva, that was their base often. So I'm quite sure Melissa had cleared the way and they told her, carry on. And Geneva was open from Sunday, from Thursday 11 o'clock till Sunday morning. It never closed. It never closed. And, and then the crowds were coming to in front of the house and singing songs and amazing, amazing scenes. And uh, my grandfather's brother he had put two barrels of beer behind the bar, paid by him, so free drinks. Mm. It was, well, we all had to, well, I was told, I was tired anyway. The Western Mail came the following day. But now the tradition was to have a cavalcade through the constituency, as Gwynvo did it in 66. You know, and there were a couple of hundred cars. And we went all around the constituency, one big cavalcade flags and songs and everything, stopping in every place, St. Clair's, Whitland, uh, all those parts of the Newcastle Castle Emily, you know, Clangado, Clandilo, Clandavery, over the Black Mountains to Brindaman, down to the mining areas, then across to the two Pont Yates, and amazing scenes, right? And in fact, my father wrote uh, uh, a lengthy poem about it all one day, years afterwards, which uh, depicts it brilliantly, okay? And it was quite something to, to, to behold. Um, and only one story that sticks out in my mind. I said earlier in the interviews about some of my relatives. 
Well, one of my grandmother's brothers, who was not adverse to having quite a bit to drink, and his cousin, who was very adverse to drink a lot, uh, Griffith John. They were, on, they were on the trip with us, on this cavalcade. Well, we lost them in St. Clair's. I don't think they knew where they were, to be honest, but they lost them in St. Clair's. So we had to make a decision, what are we going to do? We can't leave them here. The cavalcade wants to carry on. So they, I said, look, I'll go round in my open air Jeep, round the council house estate on my own. We leave all the cars, because a cavalcade of a couple of hundred cars causes chaos, doesn't it? You know, but there were other people trying to go to town, there were other people trying to go to shop. So I said, look, you're not going to go around that again. I'll go on my own. And somehow, the two of them were walking the pavement in, in, in the council house in St. Clair's, pushing a lawnmower. And, and we had to tell them to leave the lawnmower. And bring us with them, you know, crazy. Crazy times, but great, great times.